Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. This is my review of Life Show, a Chinese drama from 2002 that was directed by a man named Zhang Ki Huo, who previously directed Postmen in the Mountains from 1999, a fantastic drama that I covered in a separate review on my channel. Now, after Life Show, he would go on to direct an impressive romance film called A Time to Love that starred Zha Wei. And after rewatching Life Show recently, I think it rivals Postmen in the Mountains in terms of overall quality. And that's really saying something, because Postmen in the Mountains, pretty sweet flick. Now, adapted from a famous novel, this tells the story of a woman who runs a small restaurant in an old quarter of Shanghai. Installed as the family matriarch after her mother died and her father eloped shortly afterwards, she cares for her nephew, struggles to keep her brother away from drugs, and, most importantly, attempts to regain possession of the family home that was lost during the Cultural Revolution. Now, that plot synopsis sounds a bit dry, doesn't it? It sounds like a like kind of a dry drama film. Well, not with this actress, it isn't. This uh, lead role is played by Tao Hong, who was the co-lead in the Ho-Chung Pang film Beyond Our Ken, a film that I also reviewed in a separate video on this channel. I love that movie, and I love her in that movie. Now, in that review, I mentioned that Hong is a criminally underappreciated actress in the West, and Life Show is a prime example of this. She's given the task of carrying this film on her shoulders, and she does it so effortlessly, it's a joy to behold. You know, she has bountiful screen presence and exhibits a wide range of emotion in convincing fashion. You know, Life Show is worth watching for her alone. Like, she's that good in this. But the frustrating thing for me is that her overall career is difficult to assess because almost nothing outside of Life Show and Beyond Our Ken has been released internationally through legitimate means. You know, she's only been in a handful of feature-length films, but I recently discovered that she's apparently been keeping herself busy doing a lot of TV drama work. So maybe I'll dig for some of those to watch, although Chinese TV dramas are sometimes pretty difficult to find with subtitles. But bottom line, Tao Hong is awesome. The other thing I noticed even more about Life Show after a second viewing is that it has quite a bit of atmosphere to it. You know, the opening shot throws us right into the mix. You know, uh, our protagonist walks out of a dark alleyway into, like, the hustle and bustle of the market streets at nighttime. And the restaurants here have open fronts, uh, and they serve their food outside in kind of a, a common street area. You know what I mean? It's almost like they have a restaurant with a kitchen in the back, and the front operates almost like a food stall of sorts. You know, it was a pretty interesting setup. Uh, I always like the visuals of steam that comes from cooking foods with boiling water and, and that, especially at nighttime. There's something about that, that visual that makes me hungry and it looks pretty cool at the same time. And thankfully, a good chunk of the film does take place at night in this uh, kind of dining area, I guess you could call it, you know, street area. Pretty cool setting. Now, in terms of production values, Life Show has that soft cinematography that was common in mainland Chinese films from the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, some Korean films also have that visual aesthetic. You know, it must have been the cameras that they used. But I really like the visuals that come through, and sometimes I actually prefer this to the sharp, crisp visuals of more modern films. You know, it kind of, there's something about it that creates almost like a little bit of a dreamy experience, because everything looks softer. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to describe. As a side note, though, our protagonist works at that small restaurant, but it specializes in duck. More specifically, duck necks as a food, which I don't think I've ever had duck necks before, but uh, I have eaten duck, uh, duck breast and other parts, quite a few times, and I freaking love it. I think that it's a remarkably delicious meat that goes under the radar in the United States. A lot of people don't believe me that duck can be really tasty, but man, it's, I've had duck that's just phenomenal. Just a side note. But uh, for anybody, any, any of you out there who haven't had duck yet, check it out. Now, the dramatic elements in Life Show are also very good. You know, you can feel the pressure that our protagonist is under in her life. You know what I mean? With all these different things that I mentioned before, all these different conflicts and problems. But it's not really overstated. You know, it's naturally communicated, and she exhibits 
strength in natural ways as well. So it's very easy to get on this woman's side. However, there are a few decisions she makes near the midsection that uh, they're a little dicey, man. I, uh, you know, I was like, why is she making this decision? Like, it's just, she have an ulterior motive? And uh, that creates some multidimensionality because she does a few things that I did not agree with. Uh, I felt like they were in uh, in bad taste. <laughs> Nothing like really bad, but just uh, you know, it creates a little bit of a multidimensionality to her character where she wasn't like a perfect person. You know what I mean? She has her goals, and sometimes she's willing to do some things to get them. Um, there's also a romantic uh, side plot involving an older man who attempts to court her throughout the film. And usually in a drama that kind of throws in a romance or any type of genre film, an action film or a horror film, they throw in a romance, it doesn't always work. In here, it works really well. It's practical and realistic. It's not just like another sugar-coated love affair, like a puppy-dog romance type thing. Uh, It actually perfectly fits in with the tone of the rest of the film, which is very practical and realistic. You know what I mean? I like how it concluded, too. It's, uh... It was a very good subplot that actually added to the film. Nicely played on that. Pacing is deliberate, which could be, you know, a problem for some viewers. Some viewers might think it's a little slow, but I thought it was just about perfect. You know, dialogue is efficient and meaningful. There's really not a lot of wasted time in this, even though things move deliberately. You know, every scene is kind of kind of important. And, uh, you know, not having a lot of dead weight or filler is, is a big thing for me. So, I mean, life show... Especially after a second viewing, I really appreciate this film even more now. It's a really good movie, and it's still available on Region 1 DVD in the United States. So check this one out uh, if you want an impressive drama that revolves around a protagonist with practical problems and a lead actress performance that's just fantastic. Uh, One thing to note is that the subtitles on the DVD, the Region 1 DVD, are not white. They're like a very light gray which makes them difficult to see at times in the film, which is annoying, especially at the start. You kind of get used to it, but there might be some uh, statements in there that you're going to miss just because the subtitling color is just stupid. I don't know what they were thinking, but just a heads up on that inconvenience. But this movie's worth checking out. And as always, I'll see you next time.